I know what it's like when you have an idea for a video, but you want to shoot some B-roll to make it a bit more visually engaging, and the only way that you can get the B-roll that you want is to film yourself. But where do you start, and how do you do this? Using sequences is a really great way to get enough B-roll that also tells a story. And these sequences don't have to take a long time to shoot either, so don't think that you need to spend ages setting up. But there is one key step that I do first to make sure that it's a quick and easy process. And I'm gonna show you what that is and how I do it in this video. So what is it that makes this process easier and a lot quicker, making sure that I get all the shots that I need? Simply planning. And to plan your shots, you don't need anything fancy, but a bit of paper and a pen. But if you're planning your entire video and workflow, then having a good tool to tie it all together makes it even more efficient. And for me, that tool is Milanote. The reason that I use Milanote is because I'm very much a visual thinker. So I want to see everything laid out on a canvas so I can easily see the whole flow and reference things very quickly. I've moved my entire planning system over to Milanote now because I just love how everything links up and flows. So if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description as you can get started using Milanote for free with absolutely no time limit. So the first stage in planning my sequence is making sure that I've got my script finalized because the sequence is going to complement the script. So to plan a sequence, I start by thinking about what it is that I actually want to show. So take this for example. You should choose a camera which is more budget friendly or go for something which is more high end that kind of grows with you. Because then at that point you're trying to figure out whether the extra cost is actually worth it in the long run. And you know, this is something that a lot of creators face. I think most creators face this. Even though what I talked about wasn't directly related to what you see on the screen, it still had some relevance because it was me getting ready to go out and shoot that video. And I planned out what that whole vlog was gonna be. So you can really make your B-roll sequence directly related to what it is that you're talking about, or you can have it as a secondary storyline that still relates to the narrative that's happening which one you choose to do is completely dependent on the type of video that you're creating. Before I start writing out the shot list, I find that it's a good idea to write out a summary about the sequence, as this tends to help me pick out my shots more easily rather than doing it from a blank canvas. So in Milano, I tend to organize everything into cards and each card is a section of the video. Then in that card, I have what gear I'll use, the summary of the sequence, and then the shot list. And doing it this way just helps me to keep it organized. So for the first B-roll sequence of this video, I knew that I wanted to show myself setting up my gear to film myself. So I thought about the entire process and how I go about doing that from start to finish, and I just wrote it out in a summary. So once I'm clear on the scene, I start breaking it down by thinking about each individual action that goes into a sequence, and I start listing that out. Also thinking about what shot sizes I might use. So this is me just visually planning it all out in my mind and then listing it all out. When I come to edit the shots, I might not use all the clips that I've filmed, but I find that it's better to shoot everything in the sequence in all the action because then it just gives you more variety and more flexibility in the edit to choose which shots you want to keep in. When it comes to knowing what shot sizes to use, I like to try and keep it quite simple and I basically use three main ones. The first shot is the master shot. This is usually where the whole scene plays out in its entirety. You can usually have this on a wider focal length so that the whole scene is in the frame. The second shot size is the medium close-up. I'll use medium close-ups when I want to give some more context to where something is, but still have it mainly dominate the frame. And then finally, the close-up. The close-up shot is good for showing detail, getting people to focus only on that one thing that you want to draw attention to. There are so many other different shot sizes that you could use as well, but I find that when you're trying to do something quite quickly and create these videos quite fast, 
then keeping it simple and just sticking to those three can really help to just speed up that process. And even if you wanted to just use two of the shots, that is still going to give you some flexibility so that when you get to the edit, you can easily cut it all up and have it look half decent. <laughs> So once you've planned everything out, it's time to start filming and I will show you camera settings, techniques, camera angles, the best gear to use, all in my next video.